I am the assistant uh, professor educator for Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Cape May County for the Family and Community Health Sciences Department. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the health benefits of pumpkins. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to go over a few um, housekeeping things. This um, program is being recorded, but your videos are, should be off, um, won't be shown on camera. And um, we'd like for you to keep muted at all times if possible. Uh, Jackie has just released a poll, and if you would be kind enough to take the poll, it gives us a little bit of background information about you and lets us know um, who we're reaching so that we can uh, best serve our audience. Rutgers Cooperative Extension is part of the Rutgers New Jersey Agricultural Experiment Station. Uh, Rutgers is a land grant university, um, which means we have cooperative extension services throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, and we're, we are, um, our job is to serve the community and support the community with educational information that is scientifically uh, research-based. And Rutgers Cooperative Extension is a, a partnership between the Board of County Commissioners, Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, and the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture, or NIFA. Uh, we have faculty right now or staff, and or staff in 21 of the 21 New Jersey counties. Um, and we're composed of three departments, which consist of agricultural and natural resources, 4-H youth development, and then my department, which is Family and Community Health Sciences, or FCHS. Um, for FCHS, we do provide outreach in New Jersey and beyond on topics related to nutrition, chronic disease prevention, food safety, and overall wellness. I will give you our um, information to contact us via um, my email at the end of the presentation, uh, website information, and as well as our uh, social media handles so that you can check us out for wellness related resources and follow us on social media um, if you so desire. I'd also like to say that in accordance with federal law and US Department of Agriculture, USDA civil rights regulations and policies, this institution is prohibited from discriminating on the basis of race, uh, color, national origin, sex, age, and disability. So let's get started. Um, I always try to keep our lunch and learns in that half hour time frame so that you can enjoy your lunch and maybe catch a little bit of um, health information or nutrition information during uh, your lunch hour. Um, but I wanna keep you on schedule with that. So we should be finishing up just around um, quarter of uh, one here. So we should be just about a half an hour. Um, and if you haven't taken the poll already, I'd just like to remind you if you could do that, that would be great. Um, so here's our objectives for today's presentation. We're going to discuss the health benefits of pumpkins, um, how to prepare them, and how to preserve pumpkins. Um, I know a lot of people only see pumpkins as that um, something that you decorate with. So I just wanted to put it out there that, yep, you can eat them too, and, and they have a lot of nutritional value for you as well. Um, if you would like to be entered to win a prize, we um, would highly encourage you to take out your telephone, open up the screen to your camera, hold the camera up to the lens, and then just tap on it. It'll take you right to that survey. Uh, it'll only take you about two minutes to complete the survey. And then if you add your email at the end, it will not be associated with your answers. However, it will give you the opportunity to be um, entered to win a prize. So we've been giving prizes out every quarter. Um, through the semesters as people complete these surveys, and they are very helpful um, to get that feedback from me. So I appreciate it if you could do that for me. I'll put that up again at the end um, so that you can do it at the end if you have it. Um, so a little bit about the health benefits of pumpkins. Um, pumpkins are actually a vegetable in their own right. Um, and they're because they're a, a vegetable, they're going to be a nutritious food. So I just want to tackle the question like I did when I did the tomato um, presentation. I just wanted to tackle the question of whether they're a fruit or a vegetable. And technically they are fruits because they contain seeds and that by defini definition makes them a fruit. However, they are considered by the USDA to be a vegetable because their nutritional value is very similar to that of a vegetable. So just a little FYI on that, maybe learn something new already, hopefully. Um, so if you're you know, discussing it when you're having pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving, you can say, nope, they're actually a vegetable. Um, give you something to talk about at Thanksgiving. Uh, also, pumpkins have really strong health benefits. Um, and again, like I know a lot of people don't eat them, but they do have some strong health benefits. We're going to talk about how to preserve them and the different ways you can eat them at the end. But they're very low in calories. So they help to maintain a healthy weight because they're a food that will fill you up and they're uh, low in calories. One cup of pumpkin 
is under 50 calories. So um, it makes it a good healthy option that's low in calories. Pumpkins, like many other fruits and vegetables, are also full of fiber, uh, which really assists with maintaining a healthy weight as well, because uh, like I've mentioned in previous presentation, it helps everything move through our body correctly, it fills us up, and it keeps us full longer. Uh, unfortunately, most Americans fall short of fiber recommendations, and that's why I do mention it so much. Um, you want to make sure you pay attention to how much fiber is in your diet, and women should try to eat at least 21 to 25 grams of fiber a day, while men should aim for about 30 to 38 grams of fiber a day. And it really stands to reason because Americans fall short also on eating fruits and vegetables that they're not getting enough uh, fiber because we do get a lot of good fiber from fruits and vegetables. So it's another good reason to make sure half of your plate um, is fruits and vegetables at every meal. Also, um, you've probably heard that carrots are good for your eyes. You know, we always associate carrots being good for eye health, but th the various colors in fruits and vegetables, which are called phytochemicals, support various body functions. And the orange colored fruits and vegetables are good supporters of our eye health. Um, as we age, our eyes become a little less sharp and diminish some naturally. I know I was just saying that last night when I got home from work, it was late and it was dark out and I had to turn the lights on to see um, what I was trying to read. Um, so, our, you know, it's just naturally that our eyes are a little less sharp and, and somewhat diminished as we age. But pumpkins are rich in beta carotene and that helps the body to produce vitamin A, which in, in turn, um, that can slow the process of poor eyesight or blindness. So um, poor vitamin A consumption has been linked to blindness and higher Intake of beta carotene has been shown to reduce the incidence of cataracts and some common causes of blindness. I'll talk a little bit more about beta uh, carotene compounds and pumpkins in a minute, um, but lutein and zeaxanthin uh, are um, also found in pumpkins and they're li linked to lower risk of age-related macular degeneration. Um, as well as cataracts. So um, good, good reason to eat pumpkins. They have, uh, you know, they'll help you out with your eyes. The good amounts of vitamin C and vitamin A in pumpkins function as antioxidants uh, also. And that helps prevent harmful free radicals, which may damage your eye cells. So um, and they're helping out with those free radicals there. Uh, pumpkins are packed with vitamins and minerals. Um, for instance, pumpkins are rich in vitamin C, fiber, as I said already, as well as potassium. Folks who have better potassium levels are at a reduced risk for stroke and high blood pressure. Um, and the, the antioxidants I mentioned earlier help prevent bad or the LDL cholesterol from oxidizing, which means it stops that bad cholesterol from clumping along the walls of your blood vessels, which can also um, help to reduce your risk of heart disease. Uh, as I mentioned, I wanted to say a little bit more about beta carotene, um, which is found in pumpkins. And beta carotene is a pro-vitamin, which means the body can convert it into vitamin A, which is retinol. And vitamin A can help the help lung function. Uh, beta carotene functions as an antioxidant, which helps reduce uh, free radicals and allows uh, better cell function. Antioxidants have been shown to reduce cancers, such as uh, premenopausal uh, pre breast cancer, lung cancer, and pancreatic cancer, as well as heart disease and degenerative brain diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Um, it can also help the brain function and it boosts skin health while protecting skin from damaging rays of the sun. Um, and if you were in the tomato presentation, you probably remember that um, that was the same with the tomatoes. The benefits of pumpkins are really, there's so many of them, they're numerous, and they're good for more than just decorating. Um, I also wanted to mention the health benefits of pumpkin seeds as well. Um, so really you can eat that inner part of the pumpkin as well as the seed. Pumpkin seeds are made up mostly of protein and fats and half the fat being omega-6 uh, fat. Uh, omega-6 is uh, a, pa a fat that is polyunsaturated fat and that is good for heart health um, in moderation compared to with saturated fats that come from animals like maybe butter or something like that, for instance. Pumpkin seeds also contain potassium and vitamin B12 I'm sorry, B2. The seeds of the pumpkins are also rich in magnesium, which helps the body to create more than 600 chemical reactions uh, that are beneficial, like regulating blood pressure. Um, it helps with sugar levels, helps to prevent high blood pressure, uh, regulates blood sugar, and it helps to form healthy bones. Uh, studies have indicated evidence that public, public pumpkin seeds consumption can reduce the risk of certain cancers 
and they promote bladder and prostate health as well. So both, remember both the, the pulp as well as the pumpkin seeds can offer us really great um, health benefits uh, for everyone. And again, I just always like to remind everybody, I point out the benefits of these individual um, different foods like you know maybe cauliflower or tomatoes or, or pumpkins in this case. But remember, you can't, don't go out and eat a whole bunch of pumpkin today. Like don't just go on a pumpkin diet. That's not what it's about. What it's about is making it part of a well-balanced diet that has a variety of uh, fruits and vegetables in it and a variety of colors of fruits and vegetables in it. So as you're looking for different orange vegetables to add in, um, you know, carrots are a great one, pumpkins are a great one, butternut squash, right? We're getting into the season for some of the squashes. So think about those orange vegetables to help with all of these different um, things that I mentioned earlier. So when you think about enjoying pumpkins, what's the first way you think um, that comes to mind? Um, some people might say, oh, pumpkin spice latte. And that's actually what made me think about um, writing this presentation today because, you know, it's been really um, promoted as pumpkin spice latte season. Um, everybody's excited about that. And it's like the change of the season. I get my pumpkin spice latte coffee or something like that, or maybe pumpkin pancakes. That's a favorite of my husband's. He's always excited when he goes out to breakfast and there's pumpkin pancakes. Um, but, you know, the great idea of, pump, of promoting pumpkin flavor is good, but the smell and aroma that they give off is, is comforting and soothing. But, you know, some of those products probably don't actually contain pumpkin. And I just point that out because I was always told by the kids when in the schools that grape soda had grapes in it and they do not. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to mention it's, it's very comforting on a chilly day but consider eating it in other ways besides just maybe that flavoring way that's not gonna carry all those nutritional benefits I mentioned in the last slide. Uh, one thing that you may wanna keep in mind um, is that while pumpkin spice flavor is great for your coffee, it's not giving you those nutrients that I just mentioned in the last slide. Um, but there are a lot of ways that it can be beneficial for our health by eating real pumpkins. I found some great pumpkin recipes. I found one for a pumpkin smoothie that I'll give you. Um, I'll send that to you and follow up. Um, and it, it, it actually uses a real pumpkin in it. So um, it will have those vitamin and uh, nutrients benefits that I mentioned in the first slide about the health benefits. Um, if you're eating pumpkin solely in pumpkin pie, that's fine. However, that's also going to add some fat and sugar in it. Um, and you'll get the nutrients out of it, but you know you want to make sure that when you try to get nutrient dense diet, that you try to leave a little bit of that fat and sugar out. So it's okay to eat it um, in moderation, of course, um, and you'll get those benefits, but not as much as maybe if you did it in the pumpkin smoothie that I'm going to give you the recipe for. I uh, tried eating, try eating those pumpkin seeds too, or pumpkins with less fat so that you're getting the best nutrients that you can. And I will, at the end of the presentation here, we're going to talk about preserving pumpkin as well and preserving um, the pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin can really add a nice hearty flavor to fall and winter dishes. So think about, um, you know, adding it in pumpkin into different things, like maybe you could chop it up and, and put it in um, or puree it in such a way you could chop it up and put it in with roasted vegetables, or you might want to puree it and use it in a dish that way. Uh, the roasted seeds of pumpkins are a great way, a uh, great thing to add to salads and casseroles too. They make a nice crunchy topping for a casserole or in a salad. And when you take the seeds from the pumpkin, you can eat both the white outer shell or the green inner part, um, or you, you can eat either or, or both if you like. Um, if you eat them with the shell, they provide more fiber because you know it's gonna be a little harder to chew and a little harder to process, so you're getting more fiber out of that. Um, but I like, I like I said, I'll send you some recipes for roasting them um, to keep in mind, so it's another way you can eat them. Uh, pumpkin is really sweet, and when it's used with baking, you can add pumpkin into baking. It creates a really natural, smooth taste, and that can cut back or eliminate some of the additional um, sugar that you might use in recipes. So just like I'm sure everybody here has heard about substituting out um, uh, applesauce for baking recipes, you could do that with pumpkin as well. Um, and then pumpkin um, roasted in any dish, like I said before, can really add a nice little flavor. You can roast it with a little olive oil and a little cinnamon um, in the oven, and that makes it a great addition or side dish to a meal with maybe like some turkey or chicken or something that, that's been roasted in the oven. Um, and it really give you a nice fullness and satisfaction along with that nutrient dense dish. Um, you, can use, you can use any pumpkin to eat. However, those smaller ones 
are sweeter and they're less stringy ones um, than the, the big ones that we usually decorate with. So think about that if you're, if you're thinking to buy a pumpkin to eat. And if you do carve a pumpkin, uh, that's great, that's fun. Um, but make sure not to eat a pumpkin that's been sitting out. Like don't carve it and sit it out on the porch and say, hey, I think I'll take this inside and do what Chris said and, and make it into a dish now. If it's been sitting out, um, it's liable to have grown some bacteria and you don't want to eat that and have any foodborne illnesses. So try not, don't eat the pumpkins that you've carved, um, rather, um, you know, eat, eat what you're um, using for just that. Um, also, you can, like I said, roast the seeds, um, but if you take the seeds out after you carve, then put them in the refrigerator. So again, that they're not growing any bacteria if you're not gonna roast them right away. We wanna make sure we're food safe all the time. Um, showed in this picture, as I mentioned um, in the last slide, these smaller pumpkins are sweeter. So if you're not really sure, and they don't have a sign like this one that say, says it's specifically for pies, um, then ask where you're buying them and ask which ones are the best ones to use for the, use for the pie. And probably the stand will know which one are um, best to use. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about preserving the pumpkins. Um, here are the do's and don'ts of preserving. And this goes for all foods, not just pumpkins. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're using a USDA National Center for Home Preservation or U University Extension website. Um, these sites stay up to date on preserving. They have the latest sci science around preserving and they use practices that are safe for food handling. Uh, using other sources could easily put you and your families um, and friends at risk not, for not having proper amounts of things such as acidity um, in the food. Um, for the list of do's and don'ts, um, make sure not to use blogs or sites that alter or change tested recipes. I know there's a lot out there that you can find um, on blogs, but if they're not tested or from one of the sites that I mentioned, like a .gov.edu site, um, then they might not be practicing the best safety methods. So you wanna be sure to use something that is scientifically based. So you're not handing pumpkin out to everybody that you preserved and getting them sick um, and doing so. Taking shortcuts or using those untested recipes is not a good idea. Also remember to use only recipes from the list on um, there, the USDA, the National Center for Home Food Preservation, the university websites or service um, extension services. Because again, they're, they're researching this and telling you, like they might find that, that is, pumpkins have something going on with them and they're gonna give you the most up-to-date information. Those recipes from, you know, great, great grandma, how she used to preserve her pumpkin, it was so good. They might not be um, usable now. They probably shouldn't use, you shouldn't use them because they might have something in them that doesn't account for how our food supply has changed in modern times. So uh, be sure to use one of those trusted sites that I have there. Um, you also wanna make sure that you're not using damaged um, fruit or vegetables when you can. So same goes for public, um, pumpkins. You wanna make sure that it's undamaged pro produce and it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't look icky. Like if you don't wanna eat it, don't say, oh, I'll keep, I'll preserve this to make it, you know, so I don't have to throw it out. If it's, if it's mushy or it's soft or um, overripe or underripe or damaged, don't use it. You wanna make sure you're using something that is, you know, you wanna eat that's in good condition uh, to preserve. Um, acidity is always a concern uh, when you're canning any type of food. And because pumpkins are low acid content, the only safe way to can them is to pressure can them by cubing it and canning it in a pressure canner. If you wish to pres uh, preserve a, a pumpkin puree, a butter, um, or a preserve, then the safe method is by freezing it. Um, it. It is not safe to can purees, butters, or preserves when it comes to pumpkins. Uh, when you freeze your uh, pumpkin puree or butter, um, they can be kept in the freezer for up to one year safely. So, you know, mark them um, so they're not a surprise or nobody's getting sick of when you, you um, pureed them and froze them or made the butter. So just keep those things in mind. Uh, dehydrating or drying pumpkin is also safe and you can make fruit leather to enjoy as well. It's a fun thing for a holiday, uh, a Halloween treat or a Thanksgiving treat maybe. Um, it is safe to pickle pumpkin, um, but when you do this, it's gotta be refrigerated. So you can pickle your pumpkin, but make sure to put it in the refrigerator um, and not keep it out on the shelf anywhere. Also, as I mentioned in the last si slide, really following those correct canning instructions is critical 
to keeping everybody safe. Um, and I will send you the directions in a follow-up email for you to review the instructions on preserving pumpkins. Um, if you so desire. I think at this point, Jackie's going to release the next uh, poll for us. There it goes. I see it popping. So if you could please answer the poll questions, that would be wonderful. Also popping up on the screen is that opportunity to uh, win a prize if you scan in the, um, the QR code there and answer the questions for that. That would be wonderful. Um, gives me a lot of good feedback. And um, let's see what else we have. Um, just one last thing I want, I told you, I, I promised I'd talk about preserving seeds. This is a fun thing to do, um, you know, with, especially if you're pulling out and carving pumpkins or something, um, doing that preserving of the seeds. So like I said, you can put them on casseroles or you can have them um, on top of salads or things like that. Um, to do this, to, to preserve the seeds, according to the North Carolina Extension, um, you can dry them in a dehydrator or you can dry them in the oven. Um, it does say in the North Carolina Extensions fact sheet that you want to, um, I'll share that with you um, in a follow-up email, that sun drying is not recommended because of the high humidity in North Carolina. Um, and I will say I was just in North Carolina at a conference last week and it was more humid in North Carolina, in New Jersey than it is in North Carolina. So I would say that it's pretty humid here. So you want to probably stick to the oven or the dehydrator for the safest way to dry your um, pumpkin seeds. And that's just, again, because we don't want to have them get any bacteria or anything in them. Um, make sure that the moisture is completely removed from them. So if you have um, used, you know, if you if you've carved and you and you maybe rinsed them off or something like that, make sure to pat them dry so you get that um, moisture removed. Um, you can store the preserved um, seeds in a jar or a bag that seals. And um, if you notice any moisture on the container or bag when you seal them in, then you they need to be dried more. You're going to want to take them out and dry them again. You want to make sure that they're completely dry so that they don't rot while you, you know after you've preserved them. Uh, it's also recommended to store these seeds in a container size that you'll be using only once so that the container doesn't keep getting open and allowing that moisture to get in there and um, enter the dried seeds and then potentially rot them. So, you know, if you know you're going to be using them for a salad or a casserole and, you, you know, you use like a half a cup or a quarter cup, just put them in the bag and that and seal them, seal them that way. Um, you can also store them in a cool, dry place. And the cooler, the better. Um, so in the cool, dry space, the seeds should normally last up to about four months. So Again, mark them when you did them. Um, if you if you if you make them on November first, then you're going to want to four months later. You're either going to have to use them or, or get rid of them because they're not going to be um, good anymore for you to eat or healthy for you to eat. Here's the resources that I used for this um, slideshow, and then as I mentioned earlier, um, here is our contact information. I'm always happy to hear from people, and um, I'd be very appreciative. If you uh, reach out to me, if you have any questions, and I, like I said, I will follow up with an email and uh, give you the ability to answer, um, I, you know, look at all the different resources I have and maybe try preserving some of the pumpkin yourself or, or doing a recipe with it or something like that. So um, that's all I have for you today. If there's any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, and um, if you could fill out those polls, that would be very much uh, appreciated. We have about four people that answered it. So if we could get a few more people in the poll, that'd be great. All right, I don't see any questions in the Q&A. So uh, once you fill the poll out, you're welcome to sign off. And I will, uh, oh, we have a chat question, great. I have a question about pumpkin butters. Um, if you want to put in the chat what the question about pumpkin butters is, that's great. I don't know if I can answer it, but I certainly would get a resource for you if I can't answer it. Um, and about what about white pumpkins? Um, so the differences are when you have a, um, like I mentioned before, the phytochemicals. So the different colors, we always used to ask this question when we taught the kids, are phytochemicals good or bad for us? Because it says the word chemical. So people hear chemical and they think, oh no, it's bad. But phytochemicals are actually which, what gives the different um, fruits and vegetables their color. And so they all do something different for us. Um, so if it's a white pumpkin, it's going to have similarities, I would say, probably to those um, 
bananas maybe. Um, so those, those white fruits and vegetables, they'll still have some of them, but probably not as many of the same compounds as the ones that have the orange um, pumpkins with their color. So those colors do a lot to give the different vitamins and minerals. So this was recorded. Somebody just asked if this was recorded. So yes, you can um, record it. And why can't you pressure can the pumpkin butters in a ball jar? I'm going to say to you, I will definitely, I have the research um, information that I'm going to send out to you. And if it's not in there, I will find the answer to that question. But I'm going to answer with, the, like I mentioned, they said that the way to do it safely is by the recommendations. And they probably um, are thinking that the asset levels are not going to be safe in there and it could grow something. So that's why they want you, the recommendations are, are that way. So, and you know, it varies from, from one thing to the next. And I've had people say, well, I do it this way. So sometimes it'll, the recommendation um, is just there really for your safety. So I'll double check on that for you with the pumpkin butter and I will send it in, in an email or um, I'll send it, it'll be in the information that I send out to you, okay? Well, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. It was, I don't think there's any more questions. Okay, so I'll get, oh, wait, one new message. Sorry. How can we preserve the pumpkin puree in a freezer bag? So um, if, you're do, if you're doing a, a puree of any type, what I like to do when I do, and again, there'll be instructions. Um, I have on those fact sheets I'm sending you, there'll be information. But when you do a puree and you put it in the freezer, if it's in a bag, you can kind of smush the bag out so it's flat, label it and put it in there. Um, so you can you can test it out that way. Um, and there'll be instructions for those purees in there. Um, but you know, you put it in the freezer, again, you might wanna put it in if you're using a pumpkin puree and you're gonna add it maybe to, I don't know, um, a muffin recipe or something like that. Maybe measure out how much you know you're gonna use or put it in bags that, you know, the Ziploc baggies that'll do that, so. Um, I do, I think there is a pumpkin puree recipe in there, but if I don't have one, I would certainly uh, find it. Oh yeah, a pumpkin soup recipe. I think I have that on there, but I will definitely double check because that's great, a great idea. And that's a great way to use your pumpkin puree, right? The pumpkin soup recipe. So we will, we will get on that for you and uh, send that out to everybody. So great, great questions. Thank you. I love when you interact with me and I'm not just here alone. Um, have a nice day, everybody. And you can look for that email real soon. Okay. We'll see you next month uh, in October for our next Lunch and Learn. And then we do have some other things on our calendar um, for presentations coming up that you can find on our website. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.